Good evening, and welcome to St. Thomas the Apostle Catholic Church. Tonight we're celebrating the liturgy for the fifth Sunday of Lent. As a reminder before Mass begins, please take a minute to just turn off your electronic devices. Our celebrant tonight is Father Adrian Cook. Please rise and join in our gathering song, which can be found in your song sheets, O oh God, Our Help in Ages Past. Good morning, again, good evening, rather, <laughs> again. Uh, we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we gather once again in God's house to offer praise and thanksgiving, we are grateful for the invitation and for the fact that our God grants us mercy and forgiveness of our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to invite the contrite of heart into the family of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you yourself, by word and example, have shown us the way. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you continue to be our help and our guide. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Lord our God, by your help we beseech you May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. I will, it will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day that I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All, from least to greatest, shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing 
and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Please join in our psalm refrain, Out of the Depths, I Cry to You, O Lord. Out of the depths I cry to you. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. May the word of God be in my mind, on my lips, and in my heart. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loses their life, whoever loves their life, loses it. Whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it to eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now. Yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. I've heard it said that it takes three elements to have a really good homily. It's supposed to have a good beginning, something that kind of gets their attention, and hopefully a powerful ending. And thirdly, they're supposed to be close together. <laughs> well, I usually try to get a little humor to get your attention. <laughs> Try to make it somewhat appropriate. Uh, we'll see about the ending. I'm not giving you any promises about how close together they're going to be. In our first reading, the prophet Jeremiah, fast, my favorite prophet, by the way. Um, he's a man who lives the history that he writes about. He lives at a time when, first of all, he's reluctant to be a prophet. He protests when God calls him, but he doesn't. Um, and he complains along the way, kind of like Jonah did. Uh, but he still does his job. And he lived during trying times indeed. First of all, he was so disappointed with the behavior he saw amongst people in general, but even the priests and the, the king and both in civil and religious uh, authorities, real disappointment. And he claimed that the country was falling apart and this was one of the reasons why they had been invaded twice uh, by foreign enemies and finally even the temple in Jerusalem is destroyed and Babylonians took whoever they thought might be of use back into exile in Babylon. He himself flees to Egypt where he dies in exile. 
But in the midst of all this, he proclaims good news in today's first reading. That God still loves us. He can't help himself. That even though the covenant with Noah and Abraham, the covenant mediated with, by Moses, uh, might seem to have been failures, God hasn't given up. He's going to give us a new covenant with a new mighty leader. And then he goes off into exile. St. Paul, in that very short second reading, gives us what I think is an important aspect of what kind of fellow Jesus is. You know, we, a lot of the paintings, drawings, statues of Jesus, and to some extent, presumably, the image many of us have of Jesus is a very cool, calm, and collected fellow uh, who's got all the answers and has the strength of Almighty God. But Paul reminds us that Jesus is human, was and is still human, even as he is divine. He kind of put, as Paul tells us in another place, he put aside the things of God uh, to be like us in all things but sin, but certainly like us in temptation. And in today's gospel, uh, Jesus, as he contemplates and speaks about uh, what he sees as his coming demise, uh, in John's gospel is the hour of his glory, but it scares him. Jesus says, I'm troubled. Uh, and Paul tells us that in his prayer, it's not always quiet and serene. That sometimes his prayer was crying out with loudness, lamentations, woe is me. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? As he had to have been discouraged when so many people didn't want to pay attention to him, many insulted him, more and more there's a growing uh, movement to do away with him by people who were in power. And we know that he, one of those greatest of wounds, had to be when he was arrested to see his disciples scatter to the winds, run and hide in town. So that even at his cross, there stood his mama and a few other ladies and little John, his beloved apostle. And yet still, Paul tells us he won for us salvation by his obedience. It's interesting that the word from which we get obedience is the root word is listen or hear or to heed. Like children often hear their parents, but do they really listen? <laughs> you know, do they heed what they hear? Jesus did. And that's why he responds with total fidelity in his sacrifice, where he is both priest and victim, is a perfect sacrifice that has won salvation for us all. I will close with this thought. Uh, that when the voice came from heaven, most people thought it was thunder. <laughs> a few people say, hi, angel of God is talking to him. Jesus said, no, that voice wasn't for me, it's for you. Let us all be heedful of the voice of God 
especially during this holy season of Lent as we prepare to celebrate the Lord's passion, death, and resurrection. Please stand as we profess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the world. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Confident that, as Jeremiah tells us God never gives up on us, we are encouraged to offer our petitions. Our prayer response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and Bishop Stephen Reka, that they may continue to lead the church faithful to the source and summit of the church's life and ministry through the Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the wisdom and justice of God to be the foundation of all laws and public policies enacted by the world's nations, states, and governments, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all those who are struggling in any way because of the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For St. Thomas Parish to continue to be followers of Christ, obedient to him, and to act upon his word, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. For the prayers that we offer in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all those in our parish book of intentions, the sick, the homebound, the incarcerated, all members of St. Thomas, the men and women of the armed forces and their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all those who have died in the peace of Christ, may Carol Schmidt receive the gift of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Most merciful and loving God, we come to you in our weakness. We come to you in our fear. We come to you with trust, for you alone are our sure hope. We beseech you to remove the coronavirus from our world. We ask you to bring reconciliation to our civil discord. We ask you to protect all human life from conception until natural death. Stabilize our communities. Unite us in our compassion. Remove all needless fear from our hearts and fill us with confidence in your loving care. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, our brother and our Lord. Amen. Please join in our presentation hymn, Unless a Grain of Wheat. Unless a grain of wheat shall fall upon the ground and die, it remains but a single grain with no shall live with him if we hold firm we shall reign with him unless a grain of wheat shall fall upon the ground and die it remains but a single grain with no life If I 
My brothers and sisters, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Praise and glory of the Lord. For our good and good and good and good. Almighty God, hear us, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal Feast with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow upon your sons and daughters. And so, together with all the hosts of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless you through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For, when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at table, he took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, celebrating the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love. We offer you what you have bestowed upon us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Stephen our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mother of God, with Joseph her husband, your blessed apostles and all the saints with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, now and forever. Amen. 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 And now we pray together as the Lord himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign now and forever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We offer each other a greeting of peace.
This is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who have been invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion. He who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please be seated. Once again, we are indeed thankful, not only that you're with us, but that you're patient enough to put up with us and the, and the coronavirus precautions. Again, please leave any papers, uh, like the liturgical aids, for instance, uh, on the seat of the pew so it can be collected and disposed of, one use only. You may, of course, after Mass, remain for a while if you wish to do so in prayer. But if you want to visit with your fellow parishioners, please go outside to the parking lot or to the courtyard to do so. Um, Catholic College Student Ministries are offered by the parish with a weekly Mass and meal, Wednesday evenings at 5.30 downtown. Weekly Bible study for the college students on Sunday nights at 7 p.m., same place. St. Thomas offers Stations of the Cross on the Fridays of Lent after the 9 o'clock Mass on Friday morning. So the stations begin about 9.30. And then again at 7 o'clock Friday evening. The Knights of Columbus will offer two college scholarships for high school seniors this year. There are details about that in the bulletin. St. Thomas will offer the usual Holy Week services uh, this year. The schedule is in today's bulletin. They're free. Take one with you. The Lord be with you. Amen. Oh Lord, bless your people who long for the gift of your mercy. Grant that what at your prompting they desire, they re may receive by your generous gift through Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon us all and stay with us now and forever. Amen. This Mass is ended. We go in the peace and the love of Christ.